Swagatanga. Welcome to Gully Classroom. This is the third lecture of the unit Resources and Development in CBSE 10th Standard Geography Chapter 1 Resources and Development. This is the third lecture. So what are we going to learn in this lecture? We will learn about land degradation and how are you going to conserve it. Also we will learn about soil erosion and how are you going to prevent it. The methods of preventing land degradation and soil erosion will be somewhat similar in nature but we will be learning them separately. They will be somewhat similar in nature but we will be learning them separately. Finally we will study about the two types of alluvial soil which is going to be Bangar soil and Kadar soil which is going to be Bangar soil and Kadar soil. Can we get into the lecture? Yeah, come on guys. The first topic is land degradation and conservative me uh, conservation measures. What is land degradation? Land degradation is land which is being indiscriminately used is loss, losing its quality. Land which is being indiscriminately used is losing its quality. The, why has this occurred? This has occurred due to human activities such as deforestation, overgrazing, mining and quarrying. Deforestation, we are cutting the trees indis indiscriminately. Overgrazing, we are allowing our cattle to eat all the uh, grass cover that is protecting the soil. We are allowing our cattle to eat all the grass cover that is protecting the soil, mining and quarrying without any limitation. Continuous use without conserving and managing land is also an important reason for land degradation. We are not spending effort on conserving and managing land. Let us look at three examples where this kind of land degradation are affecting different states in India. First, in Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha and Chhattisgarh, mining is happening because of this mining. Deep scars, deep wounds, deep ravines are running throughout the lands. Deep scars, deep wounds and deep ravines are running throughout the lands. What about Gujarat, Rajasthan, MP and Maharashtra sir? Over in these states there is overgrazing happening and this is resulting in land degradation. What about Punjab and Haryana? In Punjab and Haryana, these are the major states which have benefited from green revolution. So we have a lot of irrigation. In fact, we have over irrigation. We have excess irrigation. Because of this excess irrigation, water logging is happening. Standing water is created and standing water uh, destroys the soil fertility. Standing water destroys the soil fertility. It uh, push, uh, increases the salinity of the soil. Standing water always increases the salinity of the soil and that in fact destroys fertility. Okay sir, so this is land degradation. How are you going to prevent this land degradation? Land degradation is prevented by afforestation, plant more trees, proper management of grazing. When you are allowing cattle to graze, do proper management do limit their grazing. Planting of shelter bills. What is shelter bills? Shelter bills are a bunch of a line of trees which are going to prevent soil erosion and land degradation. Also, in deserts there are a lot of sand dunes. How are you going to stabilize these sand dunes? We are going to grow thorny bushes. These thorny bushes will hold these sand dunes in place and will not allow these sand dunes to shift as the wind allows them. These thorny bushes will stabilize the sand dunes and won't allow them to shift as the wind allows the sand dunes. Okay sir, what is the next point? We are going to do proper management of wastelands and the control of mining activities is also necessary. You should not overdo mining activities which will obviously leave deep scars over the land, deep wounds, deep ravines over the land. Okay. Proper disposal of industrial effluents is also needed after treatment. So you need to properly dispose the wastage from the industries. The industrial effluents must be properly treated and then they should be released into the river or into the land such that land degradation will be prevented. So these are the points how land degradation needs to be prevented. 
let us look at the total geographical area of India. Out of 100% of the total geographical area of India, 93% has been surveyed. surveyed. Of this 93%, forest land is 45%, net zone area is 46%, Permanent pasture. What is permanent pasture? Permanent pasture is a place where the cattle can go to graze at any time. Permanent pasture is 4%. Cultivable wasteland. Wasteland but can be cultivated is 4%. Fallow land. What is fallow land? Agricultural land but that land has been left uncultivated for one agricultural year. Agricultural land but that land has been left uncultivated. For one agricultural year, this is usually done to allow the soil to regain its fertility naturally. Such a land is called as fallow land and we have fallow land up to 3%. This is how the total geographical area of India is distributed. Okay sir, you told us that you will teach about soil erosion. Can you look at that particular topic? Yes. With respect to soil erosion, what is soil erosion? Soil erosion is soil cover is removed by different natural agents like wind, glacier and water. Soil cover is removed by different natural agents like wind, glacier and water. Why is this happening? There is a loss of soil cover. What is soil cover? Like we are doing deforestation, we are doing overgrazing and the grasses and the trees which are protecting the top soil is lost. That is basically loss of soil cover. After loss of soil cover, what is happening? Rain is coming and it is washing away. Subsequent washing away of soil is happening. This is resulting in soil erosion. So, usually won't soil erosion and soil formation be perfectly balanced? Yes, soil is getting eroded uh, You uh, always. In the same way, in the same rate, soil is being formed. Am I right or wrong? Yes, you are right. Usually, soil erosion and soil formation are balanced, but because of a lot of human activities, more soil erosion is happening. Oh, what are those human activities? We are doing more deforestation, overgrazing, construction and mining. Because of this, more soil erosion is happening. Running water is cutting a lot of ravines, is cutting a lot of deep gullies in clayey soil. Gullies means deep uh, deep parts water gullies gullies means deep channels gullies means deep channels okay running water is cutting clay soil it is creating gullies and deep channels this is creating a lot of ravines what is the meaning of ravines ravines means gorges sir give us a more relatable word ravines means pallathakkal in tamil okay this land ultimately becomes unfit for cultivation because of those deep ravines this is called as badlands and good example is ravines of Chambal Basin. Sir, where are ravines of Chambal Basin present? Ravines of Chambal Basin are present towards the North India in the central part near the Yamuna Chambal Basin. Near the Yamuna Chambal Basin uh, around Uttar Pradesh. Around Uttar Pradesh. The ravines of Chambal Basin are in fact so deep. They are very very famous for robbers and decoits. They are very very famous for robbers and decoits in North India. Okay, let us look at sheet erosion. She, what is sheet erosion? The top soil is washed away by a sheet of water which is flowing through a large area down the slope. Which is flowing through a large area down the slope. That is called a sheet erosion. What is wind erosion sir? Loose soil that is present on the top is getting blown off in flatlands by the wind. Why? Winds are flowing more faster and easier in flatlands. So, Loose soil on the top is getting blown off by the wind in flatlands. That's basically soil erosion. Sir, how can soil erosion be prevented? We will study this under four topics. First, soil erosion can be prevented by counter plowing. What is counter plowing? Along the slope of a mountain, you are going to plow along the counter. Along the counter lines. What are counter lines? Counter lines are lines which run along the slope. What is slope? This is the slope. This is running along the slope. So, plowing along the counter lines. Plowing along the counter lines. 
stops flowing water, decelerates the flowing water and prevents soil erosion. Sir, what if we plow up and down the mountain? If this is the mountain and you are plowing up and down the mountain, it increases, it accelerates, accelerates the speed of flowing water. It increases and accelerates the speed of flowing water because you are plowing uh, sorry, you are plowing up and down the hill. This is accelerating the flowing water and increases soil erosion. So you need to do counter plowing to prevent soil erosion in hills. What are the other steps by which soil erosion can be prevented in hills? Let us do terrace farming. What is terrace farming? Steps are cut in the slopes and farming is done on these steps. Steps are cut in the slopes. You are cutting steps and doing farming there. This is restricting, restricting soil erosion and good examples of this are western and central Himalayas where we are having a lot of apple orchards. Western and central Himalayas do a lot of terrace farming with respect to apples. Okay, what is strip farming sir? Let us say we have a very large field. The entire field is divided into strips. The entire field is divided into strips and in between the crops you are planting grasses. Why are we pre planting grasses? These grasses are breaking the force of the wind. The wind is trying to carry away the topsoil because we have grasses in strips between the crops. It is breaking the wind. It is fighting against the force of the wind and Preventing soil erosion. Okay, sir. How are you going to prevent soil erosion? By creating shelter bells. You are going to plant a lot of trees and you are going to do afforestation. This is going to stabilize sand dunes. Wait, sir. But you just told you can stabilize sand dunes by planting a lot of thorny bushes. Yes. That can also be a part of your shelter belt. Thorny bushes can also be a part of your shelter belt. Yeah, that's basically the four points by which you can prevent soil erosion. Counter plumbing, terrace farming, strip farming, creating shelter belts. Okay, now let us look at the two different types of alluvial soil. Both Bangar and Kadar are simply two different types of alluvial soil. We will study how are they formed, we will study where are they formed and we will study some differences. Okay, first what is Bangar soil? Bangar soil means old alluvium. Kadar soil means new alluvium. Sir, so how am I supposed to remember this? Okay, Bangar soil. First, let us write B. Rub of the topmost layer. Rub of the topmost layer. What are you getting? Does this look like a O? So, Bangar means old alluvium. Bangar means old alluvium. How am I supposed to remember Kadar soil, sir? Write K. Write K. Yeah. After you have written K, rub of the top part. Rub of the top part. You can put a N, which is new alluvium, which means Kadar is new alluvium. Can you now remember Bangar is old alluvium, Kadar is new alluvium. Okay, sir. What next? Bangar contains old alluvium and forms the larger part of the northern plains. Bangar soil contains old alluvium and it forms a larger part of the northern plains. But Kadar, it contains new alluvium and it is formed from fresh deposits. All alluvium soil is formed when river takes fine particles and comes down and settles the soil on its bank. Kadar soil is the uh, new alluvium which is formed from the river. But Bangar means old alluvium. It was formed many many years ago and it has shifted away from the river. The old alluvium or Bangar has shifted away from the river. Let us recall the first difference. Bangar, old alluvium forms a greater part of the northern plain. Kadar, new alluvium formed from fresh deposits. What about the second point? Uh, it is found in inland regions above the flood plains. Above the flood plains means Bangar or old alluvium is formed, uh, sorry, it is present away from the river, away from the flood plains. Flood plains are near the river. Let me tell you, flood plains are near, near, near the river. Bangar or old alluvium is present away from the flood plains. Okay. Kadar, new alluvium. It is present on the flood plains because right now the river is bringing Kadar soil and depositing. So it is present along the banks, flood plains and delta regions. Banks, flood plains and delta regions. Sir, what are delta regions? Let us say the river is flowing and here there is your sea. Here there is your sea. This river will break into different distributaries and distribute its water to the sea or ocean. This is in the shape of a triangle which is called as delta. 
which is called as delta. So this region is called as delta region. So kadar soil is present in delta regions. Okay, sir. Is Bangar soil renewed every year? No. Bangar is essentially old alluvium that is present a lot of distance away from the river. So it is not renewed every year. But Kadar soil is renewed every year due to flooding. Kadar soil is renewed every year due to flooding. Okay. The flood is coming along the river, depositing Kadar soil and running off and running off. So every year when the flooding of the river is happening, new Kadar soil is being deposited on the banks of the river. Sir, what about the characteristics of Bangar soil? Bangar soil are coarse particles and dark in nature. They are coarse particles. They will be uh, slightly larger in size, coarse particles and they will be dark in color. What about Kadar? Kadar will be fine particles. They will be light in color. So Kadar is fine particles and light in color. Sir, comment on the fertility of Bangar and Kadar soil. Bangar soil is not always fertile. Why sir? Because they contain Kankar nodules which are CaCO3 particles. Calcium carbonate particles. Kankar nodules with CaCO3. But Kadar soil is more fertile because they do not have Kankar nodules with CaCO3 or calcium carbonate. So that's basically the difference between Bangar and Kadar. Bangar and Kadar are not essentially English words. They are Hindi words. Bangar, Kadar. Okay. So Bangar soil and Kadar soil. Okay. That's the end of this lecture. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Sir, how are we supposed to study this lecture? How are we going to give importance to these questions? First, uh, the, these questions are comparatively stuff that you have already studied in lower classes what is soil erosion what is land degradation so i will recommend you to remember specific points like with respect to soil erosion you can separately remember what is counter plowing what is terrace farming what is strip farming and what is creating shelter belts how are you going to prevent soil erosion is a separate important question that has been asked in the cbse exam it will be asked in usually three months you can remember these four points also bangar and kadar soil this is an important three star question that has also been asked in the board exam but this particular topic contains only three things what land degradation how to prevent it soil erosion how to prevent it and difference between bangar and kadar soil i will recommend you to study the entire lecture i will recommend you to study the entire lecture because it's not really tough this particular lecture is not really tough Okay, Tango, hope you guys enjoyed this lecture. If you like this lecture, recommend our lecture to your friends. Click the like button, share it with your friends. Yeah, subscribe to our channel. Let us grow together. I am having so much fun teaching to you guys. Cheers and thank you. Hope to see you guys in the next lecture. Thank you, Tango. Cheers, cheers. Thank you, cheers.